The laws have changed. They should inform you, people of that. You, when you go to the DMV, you used to be able to change your license that day and walk out with it. Now you get a receipt. I think the opposing factor doesn't want me to vote. There's a certain group of people that they don't want to vote because they don't vote the way that they want them to vote. These people want to stay in power. And so in order to stay in power, they change the voting system. So you're frustrated when you go to the polls to vote, if you get there. I've been voting since I was 18. The day I turned 18, my mother said, go across the street and register to vote. And that's what I did. Now, instead of getting your driver's license right away or the state ID, you have to wait because our IDs are processed in California. That is different to other states. That's different for us. That's one of the changes in the laws that people don't know about. Do you need help getting an ID? No, no. Do you have to register to vote? No, you need a state ID? Um, I can assist you in getting a state ID. Um, do you have a birth certificate? No. Do you have proof of birth? I lost my whole uh, uh, wallet. I'll call you and we can set up a time so I can take you to the DNV. Okay. So you tell these people that I'm gonna call now. Oh, it's you. <laughs> I'm going to call and set up a time that I can come and get her and take her to the DNV. Okay. Thank you, Mary. Okay. I look forward to helping you. Okay. So if I take her to the DNV, we will say that she needs an ID so she can vote. That way, the ID will be free. Now, she doesn't have a birth certificate. That's strike one against her. So the DNV is going to have to do the petition process for her to verify birth date and municipality. I'm in a condo way west. Everybody's registered to vote over there. But there's pockets like this where you will find a lot of people that are not registered to vote. When I first started doing this job, I was only educating people on their rights inside the polls. But then, you know, things started changing. The laws started changing. No, I need a clipboard and I need punch cards without initials. It's very much a very segregated city and it shows in economics and the way the neighborhoods look. It's the worst place in the nation to raise a black child. And it's the most segregated city. And as a black woman, I honestly love voting. From just the history of voting and how it affects, especially minorities and black people and being a black woman, I love going to the polls. I'm like, this is my, this is how I'm gonna vote. You're gonna hear me whether you like it or not. Hi. Do you guys mind if we talk to you for a quick, oh. Hi. Oh, you're so cute. <laughs> Even the places that do have a high voter turnout, they're really being affected by less people going out to vote. Even elderly people who have been voting in every election for years, they don't have the proper photo ID to vote. These are all that we got. I got 38 yesterday. It's working hard. The 2016 election was the first election with this law in place. And something that we came to realize, well, like our student ID, for example, isn't voter ID compliant because in order for it to be compliant, it needs to have a signature and an expiration date, and our IDs don't have that. I also went to a session from the ACLU where they talked about somebody from a low-income community had only a bus pass, and their bus pass had their photo on it, but it's not voter ID compliant. 
and from where they lived, there wasn't a bus line that could get them to the DMV. Or even for transgender people or mm -hmm. um, non-gender conforming people, who they are might not match their ID or might not match like any of the documents that they have, so why should they be barred from voting too? I do feel that the intent was to make it harder for low-income people, people of color, people with disability, senior citizens, students, it, just to make it harder for them to vote. Any way this government can win an election, they will. They don't have enough substance to stop us from voting. So, as my mom used to say, they gag at a gnat and swallow a camel. <laughs> so any little thing they can find wrong, they will use that against us to say that, you know, we're cheating when we go to vote. I need as much help as I can get. And if we can work together to educate people on the voting laws and encourage people to go to the polls to vote, this is a great thing. I'm Sydney and this is Senia. And we work, <laughs> your makeup's really pretty by the way. Thank you. We work for this organization called LIT, which is Leaders Igniting Transformation, and we train youth to be socially active. We give them information about how they can vote and where they can vote because they do have online registration. We typically take phones and tablets with us so we can also register them right there on the door if they so wish to get registered. Some groups uh, felt intimidated when they went to vote because um, they felt that people laughed at them because they didn't understand everything. What I do is I go with them and advocate for them, with them and let them know everything that they need. They hate the treatment they get at the polls or they hate the treatment that they get at the voter registration place. So just finding out that there's a person who's willing to help them who just came to their door versus them having to go to another place, that helps them a lot too. Yesterday was a really good day. Yesterday was, was like a really good day. Down that way? Yeah, so like usually our average day, we might get like 20 plus cars. Yesterday we almost got like 40. It's hard for them to get that information, so we try to help as best as I could, especially our immediate groups. Mm -hmm. And like even things as simple as registering students on campus. If they're not from Wisconsin, they have an out of state driver's license, which doesn't work. And then their student ID doesn't work either. It's just all about explaining what they need to be able to vote. Usually we get like the big groups where they're sitting out here, we're like, hey, can we bother you? And usually they're like, uh, I guess. They're like, oh, you're not passing out any nomination papers? Okay, we'll sign. A little cardio. Wisconsin had some of the highest voter turnout in the nation. We used to vie with other states like Minnesota to have the highest voter turnout. Now, unfortunately, we're heading in the wrong direction thanks to our restrictive voter ID law. It has confused voters. There's a lot of evidence that the voter ID law suppresses voter turnout, especially students, the elderly, and people of color. Does this seem like something that people who are confident about winning a fair election would do? I don't think so. You know that a lot of Republicans since 1984 in the presidential races have not been able to win in Wisconsin. Why would it be any different for a Ted Cruz or a Donald Trump? Well, I think Hillary Clinton is about the weakest candidate the Democrats have ever put up. And now we have photo ID, and I think photo ID is going to make a little bit of a difference as well. Even if they weren't being so brazen as to say in public that laws like this will help one candidate or another win, we can look at the results and see that this is wrong. Studies in Wisconsin have come up with numbers ranging from anywhere from tens of thousands of voters to even hundreds of thousands of voters, eligible voters, who were either prevented from voting or discouraged from voting in the 2016 election. And to put that in perspective, President Trump carried Wisconsin by 22,000 votes. This law is discriminatory. We think it's unconstitutional. If they pass this with the best of intentions and have learned since then that it's having these damaging effects, then okay, but let's admit that and let's get rid of this law.
I haven't heard a crazy story about voter fraud. I, I don't know any, I'm sorry, I don't know any crazy stories about voting fraud because it doesn't happen in Wisconsin. <laughs> I've never heard of it. And I've had a lot of Personally. friends work the polls and they've never had any instances of voter fraud. I feel like people just kind of make up like, different <laughs> stories because in actuality, voter fraud does not happen like hardly ever. In the real world, no one or almost no one at great personal legal risk is going to try to impersonate somebody else to cast one or two votes. I worked in 2016 during the recount and we didn't have one uh, thing of voter fraud that popped up. I, waited in the county clerk's offices and they recounted ballots and the counts did not change <laughs> based off of some type of voter fraud. Did you guys register online or did you do it in person? Do you guys know what your voting polls are? No. <laughs> are you guys I think the community knows the importance of this election coming up and they want to do all that they can to make sure that young people are engaged in this election in a meaningful way. We have gained up to probably 3,000 people to register to vote like just by doing stuff like this. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's the primary for it. We're canvassing, we're phone banking, we're text banking. We're meeting people where they're at. And uh, in the state of Wisconsin in particular, Scott Walker knows that if young people do vote in numbers, that we will be able to vote him out of office. I want to organize and continue the work that we've been doing and the coalition work that we've been doing to continue to push back against Governor Walker's oppressive voter rights uh, legislation. I just heard that uh, the next policy point for Republicans in the state was to get rid of same-day registration, and I'm saying no to that. I just want to make sure that people are aware of the election and they know that they have to take a photo ID to the polls when they I go and vote. Up. I got my ID ready. Okay. At first, when they started changing laws, I would go out one day and say, these are the changes, this is what you have to do. I would go to bed and go to sleep, and when I woke up the next morning, the law had changed again. And then I would have to go back and say, no, no, you can't do this, this is what you have to do. That's why people were so confused in the beginning, you know, because they weren't sure themselves. If I go in a church, I can speak to 300 people at one time. Everybody in the room gets one of these cards. It tells you everything that you need when you go to the polls to vote. The more people that get their IDs, the pool does get smaller, but there are those people out there that don't know that I can get an ID. Those are the people that I'm trying to reach, and that's why I go around talking to people as much as I can. Young people should be involved in the voting process because this is our future. There is no other way to put it. We're still fighting for basic human rights in 2018, and we're still fighting to be heard. It's a, more of a balance act, so you have to find a balance. So you have to be able to take the discouragement that you're feeling and use it to motivate yourself mm -hmm. and your community.